Dividends come from profits. If a company earns $5 a share, they have the choice of paying out some of it to the shareholders in a form of a cash dividend. Hello, future dividend earners. Think about waking up every day knowing that smart investing helped your bank account grow while you slept. Sounds like a dream, right? But what if I told you it's totally achievable with the right strategy and wisdom from investment guru Peter Lynch? In recent years, companies in the S&P 500 have been handing out billions in dividends every single month. And historically, dividends have been a massive part of what makes stocks profitable over the long haul. And did you know that, despite the market's ups and downs, the S&P 500 has historically returned an average of around 10% annually over the long term, with dividends being a key component of those returns. Today, we're taking a page from Lynch's book to discover the fastest way to secure a monthly dividend payout of $5,300. Whether you're new to investing or looking to level up your portfolio, we're here to guide you through turning your investments into a dependable stream of income. You can become financially free by investing in dividends. Let's get started on this exciting journey together. All right, let's go into the world of dividends, those little payments that can make a big difference in your investment journey. Imagine owning a small piece of a big company. Every so often, the company makes a profit and decides to share a bit of that with you, who are the shareholder. That's a dividend for you, your share of the company's earnings paid out just because you own a piece of it. Now, let's bring this to life with an example. Suppose you own shares in a company famous for its coffee shops. Let's call it Java Joy. Java Joy has had a great year, and they've decided to share their success with their shareholders by paying out dividends. If you own 100 shares and Java Joy pays $1 per share, you'll find an extra $100 in your bank account. It's just like that. It's your reward for believing in Java Joy and investing your money with them. Peter Lynch, a legend in the investing world, had a good eye for picking such dividend paying winners. He believed that behind every stock is a company. Find out what it's doing. This means that investing isn't just about dividends. It's about understanding the business behind those dividends. Are they selling more coffee every year? Opening new shops? If the answer is yes, those dividends might not just continue, they could even grow over time. Lynch also advised, the best stock to buy may be the one you already own. This is a powerful reminder not to overlook the potential of dividend paying stocks in your portfolio. Companies that consistently pay dividends are often well established and financially stable, making them potentially less risky investments. Lynch loved these kind of companies because you can buy them and hold on to them, seeing both your dividends and your investment grow. So, dividends are more than just a nice bonus. They're a sign of a company's health and a key part of a smart investment strategy. By focusing on companies that pay dividends, as Peter Lynch did, you're not just earning money in the short term, you're investing in businesses that have the potential to support your financial goals for years to come. Peter Lynch, the legendary investor behind the spectacular success of the Fidelity Magellan Fund, always emphasized the importance of understanding what you invest in. His approach, famously summarized as, invest in what you know, can be brilliantly applied to building a dividend portfolio. So how do we use Lynch's wisdom to select the right dividend stocks? Let's dive into the criteria that align with his philosophy. Look at the company, look at the balance sheet. What is the reason the stock should be higher. The sucker's going up, it's not a good reason. Number one is know the business. Lynch believes in investing in companies whose business you understand. When it comes to dividend stocks, this means choosing companies and sectors you're familiar with. For example, if you understand consumer behavior, look into consumer products or retail companies that pay dividends. Understanding the business ensures you can make informed decisions about the company's long-term prospects. Number two, look for consistent performers. Lynch valued companies that showed consistent earnings growth and have the potential to continue doing so. In the dividend world, this translates to companies with a history not just paying dividends, but consistently increasing them. These are often referred to as dividend aristocrats, companies that have increased their dividends for at least 25 consecutive years. Number three, financial health. You should be able to look at a balance sheet and say, here's two depressed companies. They've gone from 50 to three. One company's got three million in cash and no debt. One's got three million in debt, no cash. Which one are you gonna buy? I mean, that's that, not too hard to do. 
a company's balance sheet matters. Lynch often tried to stay away from companies burdened with debt. A healthy balance sheet in a dividend-paying company means it's less likely to cut dividends during tough economic times. Look for companies with low debt-to-equity ratios and strong cash flows, as these are more likely to sustain and grow their dividends. Number 4. Competitive Advantage Lynch loved companies with a moat, a competitive advantage that allowed them to fend off competitors. For dividend investors, a company's moat ensures it can continue generating the profits needed to pay dividends. This could be a strong brand, proprietary technology, or even regulatory barriers to entry. Number 5. Valuation Even the best company isn't a good investment if you overpay for it. Lynch was keen on buying stocks that were undervalued relative to their intrinsic value. For dividend investors, this means looking for stocks with reasonable price-to-earnings ratios, especially compared to their growth prospects and dividend yield. Number 6 is Dividend Yield and Growth Finally, Lynch's approach to looking for growth at a reasonable price can be applied to seeking out stocks with an attractive dividend yield and potential for dividend growth. However, beware of chasing high yields without considering the company's ability to sustain them. By applying Peter Lynch's criteria, investors can build a well-diversified dividend portfolio that not only provides a steady income stream, but also has the potential for capital appreciation. Remember, the goal is to invest in companies you believe in, understand their business, and feel confident in their ability to grow and continue paying dividends. This approach aligns perfectly with Lynch's philosophy and can help guide investors towards achieving their financial goals through dividend investing. While Peter Lynch hasn't publicly listed specific best stocks for dividend investing, his investment philosophy can guide us in identifying types of companies that align with his criteria. Lynch is known for his invest in what you know philosophy, focusing on companies with strong fundamentals, consistent earnings growth, and the potential for long-term success. Based on these principles, let's explore three types of stocks that would likely meet Lynch's approval for a dividend-focused portfolio. Number 1 is Consumer Products Lynch appreciated companies with products that people need regardless of economic conditions. Consumer staples firms, which produce goods like food, beverages, and household items, often offer stable dividends. A company like Procter & Gamble, known for its wide array of essential consumer products, represents this category well. Its long history of dividend payments and increases reflects the kind of company Lynch might favor for reliability and growth potential. Number 2. Healthcare The healthcare sector often includes companies with strong moats due to patents and high barriers to entry, traits Lynch valued. A company like Johnson & Johnson, with its diverse healthcare products and consistent dividend increases, could be seen as a Lynch pick. Its innovation, global reach, and financial health make it a potentially attractive choice for dividend investors seeking stability and growth. Number 3. Financial Services Lynch also saw value in well-managed financial institutions capable of capitalizing on economic growth. A company like J.P. Morgan Chase, with its strong financial services and commitment to returning value to shareholders through dividends and buybacks, meets Lynch's requirements. Its strong balance sheet and diversified revenue streams could make it appealing for those looking to include financial sector stocks into their dividend portfolios. While these companies are illustrative examples based on Lynch's investment philosophy, it's very important for investors to conduct their research. Considering a company's financial health, dividend history, and growth prospects before making investment decisions. Remember, Lynch's approach emphasizes understanding the business, investing with a long-term perspective, and focusing on companies with solid fundamentals and clear growth potential. Now, let's get practical and calculate how you can actually achieve your goal of living off dividends. We'll break down these steps and strategies that you can implement to reach that magical $5,300 per month in dividend income. Remember, the goal here is to make your money work for you. Using Peter Lynch's investment philosophy, let's look at how covered call ETFs can be a strategic addition to your dividend income strategy, particularly if you want to take a balanced and informed approach. Covered call ETFs stand out by offering a dual income stream. Regular dividends from the stocks within the ETF and premiums from the call options sold against those stocks. 
this strategy can raise the overall yield of your portfolio. Depending on the market conditions and the ETF you choose, it could also raise the average dividend yield from the usual 3-4% to to a stronger 7-12%. to Peter Lynch, known for his principle of understanding what you invest in, would likely appreciate the transparency and straightforwardness of covered call ETFs. They not only provide an enhanced yield, but do so through a clear, understandable mechanism. For example, an ETF like Global X S&P 500 Covered Call ETF, or XYLD, exemplifies this approach by targeting the reliable S&P 500 index while boosting income through option premiums. Incorporating such ETFs into your portfolio aligns with Lynch's advice on the importance of patience and long-term growth. It's a strategy that leverages the steady income from dividends and the additional cash flow from options, all while maintaining a key eye on the percentage yield, ensuring that your investments are working hard as you are towards achieving financial independence. This balance method reflects Lynch's belief in making informed, strategic choices for sustainable, long-term wealth building. Adapting to Peter Lynch's investment strategies, our second approach focuses on the potential of dividend growth stocks. These aren't your average steady players. They're the ones that aim higher each year, consistently boosting their dividends. Lynch believed in companies with strong growth prospects, and this strategy is similar to the famous advice to look for stocks that benefit from what you know and understand, especially those that are about to grow or come up with something new. Dividend growth stocks typically belong to sectors ripe for growth or companies leading with groundbreaking products or services. They reinvest their profits into further development, fueling both the company's and the dividend's growth. This strategy's beauty lies in its compounding effect. As dividends increase annually, so does your income, not just in absolute terms, but as a growing percentage of your original investment. This dynamic also significantly speeds up your journey to financial independence. While these stocks might not boast the highest initial yields, often starting from 2 to 3%, their potential for yield growth over time is what makes them stand out. It's the percentage increase year over year that matters, turning a modest initial yield into a much more sustainable income stream as the years roll by. This approach is in line with Lynch's investment philosophy, emphasizing the importance of company growth and the ability to spot potential before it becomes obvious to all. Now let's do some simple math to see how you can reach the goal of $5,300 per month through covered call ETFs with a 12% yield compared to the traditional dividend investing method. Let's figure out how much you'd need to invest. First, we calculate the total yearly income you're aiming for which is $5,300 every month multiplied by 12 months, giving us $63,600 for the year. Now, to find out how much you need to invest to get this annual income from ETFs yielding 12%, you divide your yearly income goal by the yield percentage. So, by dividing $63,600 by 12%, it turns out you'd need to invest about $530,000 in covered call ETFs. That's right, an investment of $530,000 at a 12% yield could potentially bring you $5,300 every month. Let's compare this with the traditional way of dividend investing, where the average yield is around 3%. Using the same goal of $5,300 monthly, which adds up to $63,600 annually, we'll see how much you need to invest to achieve this with a 3% yield. When you divide your annual income goal of $63,600 by a 3% yield, the math shows you'd need a much larger investment, specifically about $2,120,000. Yes, to generate the same $63,600 a year with traditional dividend paying stocks at a 3% yield, your investment would need to be over $2 million. So what have we learned from these calculations? To earn a monthly income of $5,300, investing in covered call ETFs with a 12% yield requires a $530,000 investment. In contrast, achieving the same monthly income through traditional dividend stocks with a 3% yield would require investing $2,120,000. This huge difference highlights how covered call ETFs, with their higher yield, offer a more efficient path to generating significant income with a smaller initial investment, 
However, always remember to consider balance between seeking higher immediate income and the potential for long-term capital growth. Investment strategies should align with your overall financial goals, risk tolerance, and the investment horizon. Whether you opt for the higher yield of covered call ETFs or the stability of traditional dividend stocks, remember, building a sustainable income through dividends is a long-term journey. Stay informed, stay patient, and keep your eyes on the prize. We're curious to hear your thoughts and strategies, so don't hesitate to share them in the comments below.